Hey there, Mike with Financeable. It's Friday, which means it's time to review our weekly challenge question. By the way, if you like these videos and you find them helpful, uh, definitely hit the like button down below. It would be much appreciated and subscribe. We have these coming out every week. Let's hop in here. So this week's question is a three statement impacts question, which is a very common question in investment banking interviews in particular. And the question here is, we have a company that has PP&E that they've sold for $100 that was sitting on the books at 50 and then they turn around after the sale of that PP&E and buy new PP&E for $75 and fund the purchase of the new PP&E with a loan. We're going to assume a 30% tax rate. And the question is, what is the net change in the total assets account as a result of these transactions? All right, let's walk through this step by step. And to solve this problem, we're going to use the four step framework that we covered in our prior videos, which I have links to up above here. So jumping right in here for step one, we're going to work through the income statement impacts. In our income statement, because we sold something that had a $50 book value and $100 sale price, we're gonna create a gain. So we have a gain of the $100 minus the $50 book value of the asset we sold. That increases our taxable income by $50, which creates a new tax liability. The new tax liability is going to be the $50 times the negative of our tax rate. So in short, we raised the income that we showed the IRS uh, for our taxable income, and so now we have to pay more taxes. We're gonna sum all this up to get the net impact to net income, which is $35, and we've completed step one. Now, what we just saw here is really mostly accounting, but the really important thing to take away is that this transaction increased our tax liabilities, which is gonna result, as we'll see in a second, in a cash outflow for the business. So with step one completed, let's hop over to step two over on the cash flow statement. So over in the cash flow statement, we start by linking in the net income that we just calculated, so our $35. But remember that $50 gain is a non-cash charge that we need to back out. So we have a gain here of 50 that needs to be backed out for income purposes. We'll actually account for the whole sale of our PP&E in a second in the next section of the statement. But for now, we have, to, we have to back off this non-cash charge. And when we sum all this up, we get to a negative 15 impact to cash. It's not a coincidence that it's negative 15. If we look over at our income tax expense over on the left-hand side, we can see that that was just the tax liability. So what we captured here is really the tax liability that we created as a result of selling this pp &E. With that completed, let's now go down to cash flows from investing and we can pull in the gross purchase price and sale price for our two PP&E assets here. So we're going to pull in the sale value of the PP&E that we sold, the whole dollar value. And remember that we then turned around and purchased $75 of PP&E. And we're gonna sum all of this up. And our net impact to cash flows from investing is $25. So we had $100 in from our sale of the pp and and $75 out from the new purchase. The thing is, we purchased that $75 of pp and with a loan, which is a cash inflow, so we have to account for that cash inflow uh, in cash flows from financing. So we're gonna sum all this up, and now we can complete step two of our framework which is cash flows from operating plus cash flows from investing plus cash flows from financing is our net change in cash and that's step two. Now we can move to step three of the framework again that we show in our other videos here where we pull in net income and cash. We should start with net income here. So net income is going to plug into retained earnings. It increases the retained earnings of the business a net of $35 here and we have a cash increase of $85 from our cash flow statement down below. And that completes step three. Step four is just filling in the pieces. So I'm gonna to go to the bottom of our uh, balance sheet here and start there. So remember we have a loan that we raised of $75, which is gonna increase our debt balance. And we can sum this all up to get to a total liabilities and owner's equity change of 110. And if we get this right, it should be the same up above, let's see here. So for PP&E, we sold $50 worth of assets. So we have negative 50, actually I can just pull this from above. So negative 50 of net book value that's gonna go away. 
But then we purchased a new $75 piece of equipment, piece of PP&E. So the net impact of PP&E was $25. I'm going to sum this up. And sure enough, after completing step four, the balance sheet balances, which means we're done with the question. And in fact, the answer to today's question was $110 is the net change in the total assets account. So majority wins. I think I need to make these questions a little harder going forward. Uh, hopefully, this is a little bit more clear now after going through the explanation. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Otherwise, hope to see you on Monday when we put out our new challenge question. And thanks so much for taking the time. Have a great weekend. Take care.